Hey everyone, today I want to continue with the video I did last week where I show you a sketch for a heroic song I'm writing for Galactic Chronicles. This one is mostly inspired by Sherry Goldsmith songs and uh, has that 70s vibe, orchestral vibe to it. It's true that in the 70s most soundtracks we are going to to synths are we're exploring new sounds but in this in this case I went for more as a Star Trek orchestral um, aesthetic. So last week when I showed you the sketch, I showed you that it started on paper. I started with the melody. Sometimes my sketch sketches are um, fully flesh, sort of like I have all sections and I do the full song. Sometimes I do just a theme or a melody and write some ideas for the whole thing. Uh, for this particular song, it was just a melody and me writing some ideas of how I wanted it to develop. So, and I think it's a good place to to make um, or clarify why I use notation instead of uh, just working on the digital audio workstation or just playing things and trying to improvise and see how it goes. Many composers work that, w work that way. It doesn't work very well for me. I used to work that way, but it, it isn't that the end result is could is def definitely worse or better. It's just that I don't enjoy it as much. Uh, maybe I'm a frustrated frustrated writer, I don't know, but I did really enjoy the, the feeling of writing, uh, more so than playing. And for me, it's just sitting down to write and think of myself as a storyteller and trying to narrate something with the music uh, is definitely what I mostly enjoy about uh, writing music and notation in a way feels more like writing for me uh, it gives me a clear picture of what's going on on the page and and where I can go and where's the theme and where I can repeat it and how I can change the theme so it express the same thing but differently for example, I don't know, the fourth theme. The fourth theme just mostly follows Luke Skywalker throughout Star Wars, and at, at least in the original trilogy. And it develops with the character. Uh, the first appearance of the fourth theme is mostly mellow and, and emotional. Uh, I think the first time it shows is when Luke Skywalker is looking at the binary sunset. So... But it follows the character and it grows with the character and grows in complexity, mostly in, in its orchestration. But it also uh, represents different moments. It sometimes is in the middle of an action song or cue and then you hear it again in a more emotional thing. And, and maybe when Luke Skywalker is le learning something, so it, it develops. And I think notation for me allows me to see that more clearly. That's sort of development I want you to make, especially with longer soundtracks projects where I have to think uh, of how to connect the dots and think, OK, I want this theme again here because it makes sense. But I want it maybe in a sinister uh, version of it. Maybe I change a, little, a, few so, uh, a few notes and make it sound more sinister or mysterious or whatever. So let's go back to the to the notation and, and this and the actual song and as I mentioned it, it's mostly focused on a heroic theme uh, and it was initially sketched on just a few stabs it was woodwind brass and strings if I remember correctly and it's and as you can see exploding to the full orchestra here I have the full uh, family of woodwinds you might get a little bit confused because I have repeated um, instruments like horns a few times and that sort of thing that's mainly because i'm i'm hosting my virtual instruments in different softwares and and i need to route them differently and i need to sort of copy and and have duplicates of many of the instruments but <laughs> I 
but as you can hear, that beat is definitely a Star Trek tribute melody. Uh, it isn't infringing any copyright uh, laws, but it's definitely inspired by that. It's the champ from from the C to the B minor to the seven minor, and and that's very Star Trek. Um, that's a very Star Trek Star Trek thing to do. And as you could hear before that, the, the, the theme I showed you in the last video just exploded and there's more stuff going on. I started simple with the orchestration. There are many like repeated notes just trying to, to move the piece forward and, and trying to, to have a rhythm to it. And then it start going crazy with different sections. <laughs> Anyway, this is not final. There's some stuff that's still sounding a little bit weird. And speaking of the theme and how it develops, for example, I have it here again. So it's the same theme, but it's it's uh, breathing in a way that's more calm and and little bit mellower maybe um, and it's sort of okay it, that's the process of narrative for me and that's again why I enjoy notation I sort of okay I say I want it here again but I want this I want it in, in this calmer version of course there are many composers that can do the same thing uh, working on the digital workstation but uh, I can do it as well but I enjoy it more when I'm seeing on paper to be honest unless I get a little bit more uh, lost um, when I'm working on on just the digital audio workstation so and here for example it switches to a more calmer and it's and this is a development of the same theme you can hear that it's sort of a it, Within the same aesthetic, it says something similar, but it's different. And that's a development. And that's another thing that notation helps me to, to write best. So let me show you a little bit of the uh, backstage of how it works of the, or the, yeah, the, the background. So not Dorico, which is this software, is a notation software, is hosting some virtual instruments, which are the ones making the sound. And so, and those instruments are hosted mainly on VN Ensemble Pro, which is connecting to Dorico. I use this for some of the instruments that I need more of a um, manual um, sort of editing and, and being able maybe to even play those to give them more expression. But I'm also using Node Performer 4, which has this algorithm that's able to play the music with samples. So it sounds more real, but it is actually playing the music. So it saves quite a little bit of work. For example, this part here is being played by the computer. I, I didn't have to play this in. The computer reads it and is able to play it. So that's a huge time, sa time saver. Before I al always had to play everything in. And there's some background elements where it's not really needed. I usually play what what's on the foreground, like melodies and that sort of thing. So yeah, I think this is probably enough. Ah, oh, one last bit I was forgetting. Uh, this is the digital audio workstation. Just to give you an idea of why I usually get lost in here is there's this huge amount of tracks to my template. And I use uh, different keys, shortcuts I program into my computer so I can switch from different views. Right now we are seeing only the stems, which are basically the audio exported from the previous software. So I, I export the audio here so it's easier. I do the mixing and the mastering here. The mastering is usually done in a bigger project where I compare the full album and the volumes and that sort of thing. But here I, I just mix this particular song. and. Normally, or sometimes, I have to add some extra elements in here in the digital workstation, like scenes or maybe uh, 
uh, exotic instrument or something else or I just want to play the line and make sure it sounds as exactly as I envision it instead of the computer playing it or or it doesn't or it not sounding very natural so yeah I think I hope this gives you a better perspective of the whole workflow behind Galactic Chronicles uh, sometimes the f workflow changes from project to project and yeah this song has been released today actually on my patreon account if you want to be able to vote on the themes i'm writing or i'm going to be writing for just join my patreon you can s sort of participate on the polls and, and make uh, your stand about what music you want me to write so thank you for your support thank you for watching and see you around bye